Hi, welcome to Robot Culture. I'm your host, Kevin Isley. Today, we're going to talk about the Osos Effect. <coughs> Osos, founded in 1976 by former Swiss professional bicycle racer, Tony Mayer Musa. The son of a bicycle shop owner in Lugano, Switzerland, Tony grew up in the cycling industry. After his racing career in the early 1970s, Tony became the first distributor of Shimano parts into Europe. This was a lucrative career for Tony, but he knew he wanted to make his own bicycle parts, and he saved his money working with Shimano. His first inventions were the aerodynamic rim, a saddle, a bottom bracket, a chain set, and the infamous Cinto. What's a Cinto? It's a steel cable that attaches the rider to the stem of the bike, keeping him in a more aerodynamic position. This was ultimately and instantly banned by the UCI. Next on Tony's list was a lightweight aerodynamic bike. So he used carbon fiber and he made the aero part of it through a teardrop shape of the tubes. This was the first aero carbon bike ever. To make his bike even more aerodynamic, he invented the bullhorn handlebars, which he attached to the top of the fork. This put the rider in a super aero position. He took his new bike to a wind tunnel at a university in Switzerland. In the wind tunnel, the bike performed well, but what he noticed was the rider was the biggest source of drag. And at that time, professional cyclists wore wool jerseys and wool shorts. Realizing wool was probably the biggest part of the drag, he asked the rider to strip down naked and they redid the test. Once the rider was naked, the scores went up, but Tony thought skin maybe wasn't the best source of aerodynamic accomplishment. So he went back to the drawing board. At the time, Olympic skiers were wearing Lycra bodysuits to create the least amount of drag possible to give them the biggest advantage. Tony's friend, Hans Hess, who was a part of the Swiss Federation ski team, brought in a skin suit from the ski team and they put it in the wind tunnel on Tony's bike and there it was, the numbers Tony was looking for. He knew Lycra was the future of cycling. Tony, his wife Elaine, and Hans set out to create the first Lycra skin suit for cycling. And this skin suit was debuted in the 1978 Olympics in Munich on the track. Rider Daniel Gisiger was the first person to wear the skin suit and the first person to ride on Tony's aerodynamic carbon fiber bike. He didn't win, but the bike and the skin suit made headlines all over the world. After that, Tony set out to create the first Lycra bicycle short. This innovation was met with skepticism as the pro peloton really liked their wool jerseys. It's what they were comfortable with and they didn't believe that this new fiber would help them in any way. But team Ty Raleigh decided to take a leap and go for it. After that, Lycra was all the rage and everybody wanted it. And just like that, it had changed cycling forever. Knowing that they were onto something, Tony thought that they needed a good name. Tony's wife Elaine is Greek and she came up with the name Asos, which in Greek means first or champion. No company in cycling today has changed cycling more than Asos. If you ask anybody on the street who is not a cyclist, how would you define a cyclist? What does a cyclist look like to you? One of the first things they're gonna say, Lycra. When I did my first effect video, which was the Rafa effect. I was so enamored with the marketing of Rafa from the first time they came out that I knew when I started this channel, I was gonna make a video talking about the effect that went across cycling because of Rafa. The next effect video I did was Strava because I'm truly addicted to Strava. I love it, I use it for competition, and I really never thought of Asos as anything but an overpriced kind of old company. But that was until I met Tony's daughter, Desi, in Mill Valley at a bike shop called Studio Velo where she was giving a talk. And the history she told me about with this company was amazing and I knew I had to research it. Because at the time Tony was building his bikes out of carbon fiber in the 1970s, nobody was using carbon fiber except for NASA and the military. You had to sign special papers to the US government stating you would not sell or trade this technology of carbon fiber to the Soviets. This had intrigue all over it. And when I researched the company, I found an amazing company that makes an amazing product. And that night I bought a pair of Asos bib shorts. The Asos S7 bib shorts priced at $249 US are perhaps the best bib shorts I have ever worn. They are ridiculously comfortable. 
amazing compression and the quality really feels like it's there and I've been riding on them for about six months and I am super impressed with this bib short. Asos quite simply makes a garment that is worthwhile though a little more expensive than average. They have some bib shorts that go up to $500. I couldn't afford that so I didn't buy it. About the 250 range which is comparable to other companies. On a side note, Castelli claims that they were the first company to bring Lycra shorts to market. According to my research and all the empirical evidence I could find, Asos was actually first to market, although this is up for debate. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Asos Effect. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you like this episode, give me a thumbs up. And as always, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm everywhere, people. And until the next time, I hope to see you out there on the road.